this tutorial, let's take a look at an important new module in RBD Lab 1.5, which is the dynamic switch. Let's build a simple scene to understand what it does. Let's take a cube. Let's rotate. Let's say this is a glass cube. Let's add a glass material. I'm just using a Blender Kit add-on for adding this glass material. And there we go. And let's um, add a standard scatter. And let's fracture. And apply fracture. Now when we take a look, we can see all the fractured chunks. And, and let's just change the material, the inner material of these chunks. Let's head to Shader Editor. And this is the cube inner material. Let's delete this material. And let's add, let's copy this glass material to the inner material as well. All right, there we go. So now these are fractured chunks all of which is made of glass material. If we actually run a rigid body simulation on this, then we might see all these chunks from the beginning, which is not desired. Let's check by adding rigid bodies. Add ground and let's add RBD. And there we go. So now let's say we go into cycles and we are trying to render this. So this doesn't look right because it starts with the fractured chunks. So we need to start with an actual cube, which is unbroken. And only when it hits the ground, that's when we need to see all these uh, chunks. So let's see how we can do that using the dynamic switch here. So let's remove the rigid bodies for the chunks. And let's get to the RBD lab originals, and then cube, the original cube. Now for this cube, let's add rigid body and let's bring back the ground so we can see better. Now let's run the simulation. So we're running rigid body simulation on the original cube. Perfect. Now let's get to the dynamic switch module and let's select the original object as this cube under dynamic parent. So this would parent these chunks to the cube. But first, let's bake original and let's bake up to 100 frames. There we go. So this is the rigid body simulation for the original cube. Now let's take a look at which frame the cube hits the ground. Let us say at frame 25 is when we want the switch to happen. So let's click switch at frame 25 under dynamic parent. Now let's see what happens. Both the chunks and the cube fall to the ground at the same time. And we see the chunks. Nice. Now let's move to visual switching. Now here under frame switch, it says move the timeline to the exact moment where you want the switch to happen. Then press the switch button to create it. So we would like the switch to happen visually at frame 25. That's when we would like the cube to be visible as chunks. And then click on switch visibility. Now let's play the animation. So we can see the cube here. And as soon as it touches the ground, which is at frame 25, it changes into chunks. That's the advantage of the dynamic switch module. Now let's take a look at the cycles preview. Let's add a material to the ground as well. Now as we play, we see that the cube is falling as a cube. We don't see fractured chunks like we did before, which is good. And as soon as it hits the ground, then we can see all the chunks. There we go. So that's the beauty of the dynamic switch.
Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.